Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the second problem of lead code bi-weekly contest. It's 362. Uh, it's a medium level problem. But yeah, a number of, I would say, there is a tricky case that makes this problem, you know, uh, the accuracy drop to a very low value. But I would say it's a good problem, uh, you know, so that we can come up with some edge cases and all, right? We, we know how to handle the edge cases. But yeah, let's see what the problem is asking us to do. So the problem name is determine if a cell is reachable at a given time. So you are given four integers SX, SY, FX, FY and a non-negative integer T. Now in an infinite grid, 2D grid, you can start at this cell SX, SY. Each second you must move to any of its adjacent cells. Return true if you can reach uh, this FX, FY after exactly, this exactly word is very important, exactly T seconds or false otherwise. A cells adjacent cells are the eight cells around it that share at least a corner with it you can visit the same cell several times so these two are the important things several times and exactly t seconds right let's look into a, a given example right so sx is two this is four so that means this is two three four five six seven x coordinates four five six seven so you start at this point you have to go to 7 comma 7 that means this point in exactly t seconds so let's see whether we can go or not 1 2 3 you go diagonal 4 5 6 so in exactly 6 seconds yes we can reach here okay let's see this one sx is this is 3 4 5 6 7 and then this one is 1 2 3 okay so i have to go from here that is 3 comma 1 to 7 comma 3 okay from here to here exact time is 3 now the best move that you can do is diagonal right because that the diagonal is the fastest way to reach from one cell to the other let's do that so diagonal diagonal in two steps i have come here right in two steps in two seconds now to reach from this cell to this cell the shortest path is this the shortest path is this because they have the same y coordinate so no diagonal movement is possible now so how many seconds it is taking the minimum seconds it is one two three and four so the minimum time needed to reach from start to end is four however i am allowed to take only three seconds so four is greater than three that means we return false it is not at all possible to basically uh, you know reach go from starting cell to the ending cell okay great so let me just erase it to give you a feel of how to basically approach this problem solution is easy but approach should be clear okay let's see now sx sy fx fy is in the range of 10 raised to power 9 and time is also in the range of 10 raised to power 9 now seeing this constraint obviously we can understand that a brute force solution will not work what do i mean by brute force that okay you start from here and you do you not know, go you go step by step that's not possible right that will time out so that's not that is something we are not looking for right so now let's go into you know some properties i'll just draw a grid okay i'll just draw a grid i will yeah let me draw a grid to explain you how this works okay suppose i have to start from here and i have to come here okay just i forget about the coordinates but this is how what i have to do right now what is the what is the difference in x coordinate right this is the x coordinate for the first one this is the x coordinate of the second one now remember here i just want to find the diff i am not concerned about what is the starting point what is the ending point because that will be symmetric right if you move from start to end in time t you can also move from end to start and time t. So that's not an issue, right? So from here to here, I have to move. The difference between uh, the x coordinate is 2. The difference between y coordinate is this one. This one. So 1, 2, 3. 3. Okay. Now, as I told, what our, what our target will be that we will try to move diagonally, right? We'll follow a greedy approach. We'll try to move diagonally as much as possible and then obviously we'll move in a particular direction either vertical or horizontal whatever is needed so we'll try to first find out the minimum time that we need to uh, that we need to go from start to end right whatever is the minimum time 
now if the minimum time is more than the given time that mean that means it is not at all possible to go from starting to end right because the minimum time is more than the uh, given time right however if the minimum time is less than the given time then it is possible but still there are some tricky cases and that we'll see how okay so first let's find out uh, let's first see how to find out the minimum time okay so if i talk about the diagonal the diagonal movement then i can go from here to here then i can go from here to here all right there are two diagonal movements because the world the the distance the difference in x coordinate is 2 the distance in y coordinate is 3 so obviously the number of diagonal movements that i can do from one cell to other is limited by the minimum value the minimum value of difference in x and y coordinates right for example for example let me just take some other example let's remove this one suppose i take this point let's assume i take this point okay now what is the difference in uh, this uh, y coordinate it is 2 what is the difference in x coordinate it is 1 2 3 4 so how many diagonal movements are possible 1 2 now after you make two movements, just you cannot move diagonal, right? You you have to come to this cell. So you move in this direction. So again, the number of diagonal movements is limited by whatever is the minimum value between these two, between the difference in x coordinate and the y coordinate, right? So that is the number of diagonal movement plus. Now the remaining distance, like in this case, the remaining distance is in this direction, right? The remaining distance is in this, in this direction. So what I'll do, suppose I have made some diagonal movements. So after doing some diagonal movements, in this case, like for example, the difference in x coordinate has, the difference in, sorry, y coordinate has gone to zero, right? The difference in y coordinate has gone to zero. How? Just see, I am picking up the minimum value out of these two, right? That is the number of diagonal movements I can do. Now, after doing these diagonal movements, whatever is the minimum value that will go to zero. Or I can say, at for these number of diagonal movements, the difference in x coordinate is also decreasing by one. The difference in y coordinate is uh, also decreasing by one in one movement, in one diagonal movement. So for these many diagonal movements, this will be minus dm, this will be minus dm. Getting it? Just see here as well. You do one, two diagonal movements. So after, when you come here, the difference in y coordinates of this point and this point is actually zero. You just have to travel the x distance. And if I talk about the previous case, let's take this one. So here, this distance is one y difference is 1, 2, 3. So you, you'll just be able to make this movement. Now, after you make this movement, just see the y coordinate, sorry, the x coordinate becomes same. So you have to move in this direction. Okay, getting it. So what I'll do, if I want to find the, out the minimum distance, I'll do something like this. The number of diagonal movements I can make. How? What's the value of diagonal movements? Whatever is the minimum difference in x and y coordinates, right? Now, after those movements, one of them will become zero okay so what do you do you just subtract diagonal movements from both of them because in 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 one diagonal movement you are decreasing the difference by one of x coordinate as well as y coordinate so obviously the absolute value will also decrease right we are decreasing the absolute difference right so this guy will become zero this guy will become two just add this value just add this value and this is the minimum time you need to reach from a particular point to the other point right this is how you find the minimum time let me show you the code okay i'll discuss the h case as well okay uh, difference x difference y difference diagonal distance is math dot min of x difference and y difference now x difference minus equals to diagonal distance because this is what we have covered y difference is also subtracted by diagonal distance right now obviously one of them will become zero so to find out the minimum time whatever is the diagonal distance plus x difference plus y difference doesn't matter which one has become zero okay maybe this has become zero maybe this has become zero but that's not an issue right which if you add zero also that that won't be an issue so this diagonal distance will have the minimum time needed to go from the first cell to the second cell right now let's come to some edge cases okay let's come to some edge cases that with the help of diagram only we'll see those edge cases right so this is a grid that I have. This is a grid I have. Okay. Suppose I have to move from here to here. Getting it? So now, suppose the minimum distance is like this. 1, 2, 3. And it says that you have to... So if time equals to 3, obviously I'll have able to reach. But if someone says time equals to 4, you, need, you have to take exactly 
four seconds, four unit of time to reach to this point. So what I'll do in this case, I, I just want to show you that it is always possible to do that. You do one diagonal movement here. And the second diagonal movement that you did was what was taking one unit of time, right? Was taking one unit of time. Now, instead of doing this movement, do something like this, go down and then come to here. What I mean to say a diagonal movement, just a second. Yeah. A diagonal movement is taking one unit of time. And if you, for the same, for the same, uh, you know, step, if you take one vertical and one horizontal movement, it will take two, two steps, right? So wherever, wherever the allowed time is more than the minimum time all i want to say is you will be able to you know reach from the starting cell to the ending cell you can take any time suppose it says that okay you have you have you have five time you have five seconds so what you will do in this case now again there could be multiple ways i'll show you that don't worry or let me take another way okay suppose my time is five so one you one one step two step three step right after three steps you have reached here now from here you can go back here fourth step fifth step so in five seconds i can come to this point getting it if it says six seconds then what you can do instead of doing this you come here come here it takes three units of time then fourth this one fifth this one sixth this one getting it that is how you do if it takes seven so what i mean to say for odd values you can you you know just come here so suppose in odd number of steps, you reach this cell. Okay. So in five steps, you reach this cell. Someone says that, okay, now you have seven units, units of time. Go here, come back here. So in seven also, you can reach. If someone says you have nine units of time, go back here, come back here, right? So that means for all odd number of values, you can just do that. What about even? If you take even amount of time to reach here, okay? Then again, even plus even because two steps, you can come back here, right? Now, if... It's not like that. If someone says, I, I take, suppose, one, two, three units of time to reach this point. I take three units of time to reach this point. And it says that you have six seconds. So what do you will do? Obviously, going like this and coming back is not possible. So what I'll do, I'll do something like this. One, two, three. Just form a triangle. Getting it? Again, I'm saying there could be multiple ways. But what I want to show you is that if the starting cell and the ending cell is different, and you have found out the minimum time. So in that case, finding the solution is always possible, right? Coming up with a solution is always possible. But now comes the edge case. And let me show you diagrammatically. Okay. Let me show you diagrammatically. So my friends, if the starting point is this and the ending point is also this, then what happens? If both of them are this, then my diagonal distance will come out to be zero. Or I would say the minimum time that comes out is equals to zero right but now let's see it for the different values of provided time so first thing the num the the time i need is zero but the provided time is one right provided time is one okay it starts from zero so if the provided time is zero great i stand here and i'll be able to fulfill the situation if the target time is two if the target time is two i can go back here come back here if the target time is three i can one two three target time four one two three four target time five so one two three four five getting it all the values are possible let's check for target time equals to one when i'm st when my start and uh, end time is same right now i'm standing here i have to come back here in just one unit of time but is that possible is that possible you can't remain at the same cell right in one unit of time you have to travel you are bound to travel so no matter to whichever cell you move no matter you will take one unit of time and to come back you need one extra unit of time okay but the allowed time is only one so that means when you're starting in the ending time is uh, ending cell is same starting and ending cell is same okay for t is equals to one it will not be possible for you to fulfill the condition right because what i said exactly t seconds and you can visit the same cell several times okay so this is the only edge case uh that is making this you know uh accuracy falls so much right and that is why i said this this is a tricky question and a good one to solve right a good one to solve so this is the only edge case my friends that we need to take care now even if you have the same starting and ending points for all the other values apart from one for all the other values this will work fine this will work in a great manner right because of the same condition right if you have to take even number of extra steps go back go come back go come back if you have to take odd number of steps 
one, two, three. Okay, you do three steps. Now you can do to and fro, that won't matter, right? So let's go with the code. This is the absolute difference of X coordinate, absolute difference of Y coordinate. This is the diagonal distance I was talking about, right? Now, one of the coordinates will become zero. Maybe both of them become zero when the starting and ending cell is same, okay? So you just add that, okay, this is the minimum distance, minimum time I need, right? Now, the tricky case, if the distance is zero, okay, if the distance is zero, ideally, I should have named it a better, I should have given it a better name, not diagonal distance, but I would say uh, minimum distance, but yeah, I missed that. Again, during the contest, you generally miss, miss this term, right? Then return t is not equals to minus one. That means if the distance is zero, and if t equals to one, then your answer is false, else it is true, okay? And obviously, if this is not the case, for generic cases where you are standing at two different cells, like starting and ending is different, you just need to take care of this condition. I've already told you, right? If the minimum time needed is less than equals to t, you'll always reach that cell. Again, for the same condition, to and fro, making a triangle, to and fro, making a triangle, okay? So yeah, that's it for the solution. I would say after, um, a number of contests I've seen such a tricky problem. Why I'm always saying because this is the second problem and generally you do not get uh, such problems at uh, the second level. So yeah, it's a good one to solve. And yeah, I hope you learn something new from this video. Do support it by giving up a thumbs up, do subscribe to the channel as well. In case you have any queries related to the solution or you used any other method to solve the solution, mention that in the comment section so that we can have a discussion there also. Okay. Awesome. Have fun. Uh, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.